Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, where or whenever this could be. This is Andrew Za, and I have a tutorial for you on Blender, especially how to create patterns like these. This is called the Voinoi. Voinoi? Right.、Um, patterns. And I'll show you a special trick using Photoshop, Illustrator, and finally, Blender. So stay tuned. First things first, load any image you want. Make sure the image has a lot of different、um, contrasts,、um, different colors. The next step is go to filter, go to pixelate, and crystallize it. And then, of course, in here you're able to adjust、um, different sizes. I, I like 100, so that should be good enough. This is perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna find the edges. See. We're gonna convert the edges into vector-based graphic, and then import into Blender to create different cells. So, first things first,、um, go into Blur, go to Smart Blur, and increase the radius all the way to 100, and the threshold to 0.1, and then make sure the quality is high. We want the best quality possible.、Um, doesn't really make a difference here. And do edges only right there, and press OK. And it will take a while, especially because if you have a larger image, it might take a while for it to process. Perfect. This looks great. Now, we want the black and white parts to be inverted so that the edges will be black and then the cells will be white. So, in order to do that, image adjust, invert. There we go. Now we can use this. However, if we're doing something organic, like a cell or inside of a bone, like a bone marrow, these edges are way too strong. You see,、uh, they're way too angular. It does not look organic. So, in order to do that, we might want to do is sort of curve these areas. In order to do that,、um, I have a solution.、Um, first of all, select、uh, color range. So we're going to select all the white areas. Just easier to see than just selecting black areas. It's much more、uh, apparent here. Select all the white areas right here. Now we're gonna go to select, modify, contract. Maybe actually three value of three is good enough. You might have to adjust it. So this is perfect. It's just right around that area, and then we're gonna make it a little curvier. These edges, all these edges. In order to do that, we go to select, modify, smooth. I try actually three before, and now I'm actually gonna try five. Or actually, let's try six. It will look much smoother. Now we have that. You can't really see it until we apply、um, the black line to these edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Um, add a new layer right here on the right, and let's just remove this、um, bottom layer for now. Select, invert, and then just color it in. And ta-da! Select to select. Now, you see edges are all kind of rounded. Now it looks kind of cool. It's like neural networks, or it's very organic look. In the next step, we're gonna take part of this. And then convert it into vector-based graphic. So, if you're thinking about creating multiple layers where you're stacking this、um, on top of each other, you can just take different parts and、um, and just convert each of them into different、um, different images. So, okay, let's start with this one. Um, if you're going to be creating a, a round shape, well, let's just do a round shape for now, for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to create a,、um, a marquee,、uh, a selection. A round wants a whole shift, so it's in, the selection is proportional. And I will grab this, and then I'll copy that. Let's create a new one and paste. There we go.、Um, make sure to remove the the background layer. So it's transparent. We want to keep it transparent as much as possible, and then save that as a PNG file. And let's call it a Vernoy. V O R O N. Perfect. And save it as a PNG. Okay. 
and this is yeah just press uh, OK by default and this is the first part in the next part let's open Adobe Illustrator and we're going to turn it into SVG file okay now that we have a Photoshop file or actually a PNG file not a Photoshop file um, of the Vernoy image that we created and cut into a nice perfect circle go ahead and open it on Adobe Illustrator alright so let's open this file and ta-da there we go okay so all we need to do is just this just trace this image right here and that's it it is done so if you see that the trace button is gone you're good um, we won't spend too much time on this uh, this should be good for what we're trying to do and here we go save this as a an SVG file perfect for the SVG options you can select um, SVG right here and press OK and next we're gonna go to blender okay here we go blender okay so I'm using blender 2.79 for this demonstration uh, first let's get rid of this uh, this cube here press delete and we're going to import that SVG file so before we do that let's make sure certain settings are are good um, so go to system and uh, make sure that you have your CUDA selected and make sure your display um, driver uh, for your display card is selected and then also make sure it's render cycles render it's just faster that way okay the next thing we're gonna do is to import that file um, right here SVG for this particular version this add-on is already active so you don't have to go in and active this add-on so let's import this SVG file here we go um, it looks pretty small don't worry about it what we're gonna do is we're gonna just um, select it so right here and you see that it's not in center so go to object transform origin to center of mass and then and then um, let's see let's press uh, N to get the properties of the, uh, the location and let's change that to uh, before we do that let's um, let's go into it first and just modify it so that um, we don't want the the white parts here we just want this uh, this particular um, dark part right here so so I just right click and select it and bring it up meanwhile I can just uh, press press A to deselect it while holding down control I'm gonna draw a little circle here saying I don't want all this press delete and there we go now the next thing is let's align this so that it's right in the center of the whole scene and um, I'm gonna scale it right now it's way too small so press S and just drag it all the way uh, perfect and the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to bevel it so that you can see the depth right now it's just the depth is zero so on the right panel uh, for the bevel option if you make sure that you have right click and this is selected um, go on the bevel um, a good rule of thumb is that whenever you import an object make sure you name it so we have our um, V Vernoy object here and 
let's see let's first of all it's kind of hard to see because it's black so what we're going to do is to uh, change its color so since we have cycles render we're going to be using nodes but here we just you can just add, click on the material panel here and um, let's just rename this to bone vh white so that's a, a different color that we're going to create increase this you know bone is like not completely white something is like slightly yellow because of a mixture of blood and cartilage i guess um okay so let's get down to business again go back to the the curve and we're going to extrude it here we go lightly click on it and just move your mouse left or right um, or you, you know sometimes it's, it, it's a little way too big there we go this is kind of perfect now let's zoom in using the mouse wheel and you know we're going to increase the uh, the depth of the bevel so it looks smoother right now it looks very machine like um, not organic at all so we're going to increase the resolution so it's much smoother okay that's way too small okay so we've extruded this much so now it looks a little more organic um, Hopefully this is good enough to 3D print. So if I'm going to create a bone, I guess we're going to have to create a frame around it. So as I've said earlier, um, if you're creating the one in Photoshop, I would um, copy from different areas of the image that we created. And so we have a nice diversity. In our case, we'll just go ahead and start creating um, the bone. This is very basic, just to get an idea. Um, okay, here we go. Tab, and then press F to fill it. Scale this thing, scale this. And then uh, we wanna make a cutout. So, um, let's see press A to deselect everything well actually this is fine press E to extrude in scale and um, yep do we want um, an enclosing enclosure at the bottom if not let me just remove the face might have to actually I did it incorrectly um, here is what I should have done yeah I'll just uh, yeah I could have done it this way so just um, extrude it up actually and then extrude scale it um, press Z if you want to see sort of like this x-ray vision here um, this definitely helps um, okay so I'm gonna move this whole thing sort of like this okay it's not a it's not the most prettiest thing ever so let's go back and extrude this again except it's going in the opposite direction so something like this now yeah, it looks like a, a swimming pool <laughs> um, this is just a rough idea um, if we really want a nice looking bones bones are not really a perfect circle um, they're usually sort of bent I guess um, irregular shape so you can do that but for now we're demonstrating the Fernoy concept here so let's just let's save that for a different tutorial so let's make this um, smooth but looks kind of weird and crappy so let's add um, uh, filter uh, modifier go to edge split what that does is for particular angles it will make it smooth like for example it says 30 set here so anything um, higher than that then it will make it um, 
an actual angle but anything lower than that 30 degrees it will make it smooth which is really really um, useful in this kind of situation so that's that bone we want to also make the texture the same as um, this bone so I'm going to select bone white there we go now they match okay all right so we want to create a diversity of um, or multiple layers of this uh, Vernoy object uh, so I'm gonna duplicate it let me see how I can do that Sh is a shifty yeah shifty to duplicate it I'm gonna move it down I'm gonna rotate it so rotate from the Z axis R the Z and just kind of randomize this rotation I'm gonna do another uh, layer shift D for duplication and then bring it down rotate Z and just sort of randomly create um, an angle now that looks kind of cool so there's multiple layers in it I can even go one more layer why not right and then just move it down and just rotate Z axis and just move it all around so it looks complex alright so if we were to render this uh, what would it look like uh, okay so I'm gonna give it a, um, a quick render first of all we need to establish a camera so I'm gonna zoom in I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in control alt zero okay actually that's not a good angle I'm gonna zoom out a little further something like um, something like here okay anyways let's see what it looks like um, rendered something like this it's got multiple layers it doesn't look as good because it's not a final result and I'm going to render the final result soon first of all um, the way bone or any organic substance is like when you shine a light through it it has a surface um, sub um, scattering effect so let's say for this bone white let's use nodes and let's add the uh, the principal shader which is a newly added feature for this particular 2.79 version of blender um, base color okay white is okay make it a little whiter and then just add a touch of yellow just a touch not too much however um, this will need to be not red a little bit yellow okay so right now we don't really have a light source okay also subsurface scattering I'm gonna increase that a little bit um, and you will see I'm gonna do a demonstration of how if you add a light source on the other side sort of shines through um, let's go back to solid mode so we can see I'm gonna add um, a lamp let's do a, um, a point point light let's do a point light and just let's do it around here I hope it's okay and um, 100 okay let's let's see what that looks like rendered um, if not we'll just increase uh, the light source okay it's pathetically very very low so I'm going to increase that. Okay, what about like 10,000? 10,000. Okay, it's really bright. There's so many dots because the sample, uh, the sampling is very low. Um, in our final rendering, the sample should be pretty high, but it's going to take way longer to render so um oh yes there's one more thing i should have done is um instead of cpu here we should change it to gpu compute not only is this faster um it will increase the render time as well in case you didn't know uh, it's, it will be much faster as you can see okay so anyways you get the idea um i'm going to do a an actual render and add a little depth of field and um, that'll be the final image 
So if I'm going to do a final render, I would go into render. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, right here. And change the... Oh, Got to stop this. Madness. Madness. Um, change the... Let's, let's make a JPEG image. Increase the quality. No compression. Increase the size. And... And one more thing. What am I missing? Oh, yes. That's right. We need the final sampling. Sample size is like 24. Hopefully, that should be good. Clamping. I'm going to add a little bit because there's these speckled little dots. And we don't want any of that, do we? Okay. Um, there is no external source of lighting. So, we can also add another... Um, sort of a global lighting material okay all right so let's add um, a, a plane just for the sake of a scene and have that okay and then sort of have that be the uh, press s lower this here what is this some sort of distant light let me see no it's a point light Let's make it the sunlight. Um, yeah, that should be fine. I'm not, I'm not too crazy about it. Okay, so how about this? Yeah, that should be cool. Um, rendered. I don't know if it's bright enough or it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem bright enough. Anyways, um. A light no, that particular lamp is bothering me um okay escape stop the rendering let's go to solid mode okay all right so you kind of get the idea of um i'm gonna use note let's see ambience occlusion i just checked the ambience occlusion that will look a little bit better somewhat man this is just way too weird looking I think because the light is way too high the point light so I'm going to lower it okay solid mode the reason why I keep shifting to solid mode is so I can actually do things and not take up so much um, computer power okay yes it's, it's very low let's put this one all the way at the bottom and what Oh, the world's color. Okay. Anyways, this should be good for what it's worth. Let's make the background totally black. It's kind of cool that way. Okay. And in that case, I just press Z so that you can go into uh, wireframe mode. Perfect. Okay. Let's go to circle. And let's see what that would look like. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Something like this yes I think that particular point light is way I, I give it 10,000 it's probably way way too much and it's super yellow not my thing at all it's way too yellow okay yeah that's right it's a little bit let's do a little orange you know you have a mix of blood and uh, uh, it's like a pinkish okay so next thing we want to do the point light okay all right how about uh 5,000 5,000 let's see if that's okay um and here we go rendered 5,000 yeah I guess that should be good enough right okay if we do the final renderation then we can actually find out what it really looks like uh, so this is just experimental it should be good actually let's just a couple of things let's um zoom in here okay got the uh, oh, okay zoom out a little bit actually um camera i press g for grab after selecting camera and 
what I'm going to do is also add a nice little depth of field. Okay, so I want to make the focus on this object, Roni, the top one. And then let's go like four. Hopefully that works. We'll find out soon enough. Okay. Can't really see. It's all blurry, but okay. And I will post the final image. So, cool. Take care. Here we go.